Hi, welcome to another edition of Rob's Mailbag here on uh, SB Nation's YouTube channel. Have some great questions this week. Uh, love to get yours for next week. The email address, which I'll give out later, is Rob's Mailbag at SBNation.com. First question this week is from Graham Womack. Graham writes, with Johan Santana's feet, no hitters are occurring at 0.37% of games this season. Far better than the 0.1% rate I estimate for baseball history. Even before Santana's no-no, the rate this year was at 0.26%. Fellow blogger asked me recently if we might see 10 no-hitters this season. What do you think the chances are of that? Well, I would say the chances are exceedingly small of us seeing 10 no-hitters this season. Um, I believe the record in seven no-hitters in one season back in 1990, also in 91. Um, now, there were six in 1917, which is notable for a few reasons. One, uh, there were only 16 major league teams at that point compared to 30 today. It was also a short season uh, because of World War I. The season ended in early, early September. Um, so on a percentage basis, that, that, that season, I believe, would have the record, 1917. That said, that was the dead ball era. Batting averages were very low in 1917, much lower than they are now, um, which batting average is a big factor, obviously, in throwing no hitters. The other highs were, um, let's see, we had uh, 6 in 1969, 5 in 68, 5 in 62, 5 in 73, um, and then again I mentioned the 7 in 1990, 7 more in 1910, or even 6 or 7 this season. There's no obvious trend toward more no hitters. I mean, we have more strikeouts. Batting average, though, are fairly stable. Um, just to give you an example, we had two no hitters in 2008, two in 2009, did have six in 2010, which is a, a great number, the most since 1991, but then three in 2011, and now three this season. Now, granted, we might expect to see another two or three this season, but another seven seems sort of beyond the pale, so I think it's highly un unlikely that we'll see ten uh, this season. I think six or seven would be a stretch, probably, given what's happened the last two or three years, we would see another maybe two or three uh, this season. Next question is from uh, Chad McNeil, and Chad writes, Rob, the Blue Jays are starting to get a, a decent uptake in attendance. Do you ever see Canada getting another franchise again, maybe in Vancouver? Well, the Blue Jays are getting an uptick, presumably because they're playing better. I mean, that's usually the what drives attendance. Um, the Blue Jays, of course, when they opened Sky Dome, uh, now it's called Rogers Center. But when they opened Sky Dome back in the uh, early 90s, I believe, 89 or early 90s, I, I should have looked, um, they drew immense numbers of people. But a lot of that was the novelty effect. Plus, the Blue Jays were very good in the early 90s. Attendance has gone way down since then. It's still acceptable, but it's much lower now than it was uh, when they opened that, that stadium. Um, I think it's difficult to make a comparison uh, or a, a, a meaningful comparison between Toronto and Vancouver. Toronto, as I'm sure you know, is by far the biggest metropolitan area in Canada. 5.6 million people there. The next largest is in Canada is Montreal at around 3.8 million. Uh, Vancouver is way behind Toronto and even behind Montreal at 2.3 million. Um, I would expect if Canada ever gets another team, and I think that old, eventually, in, our, in my lifetime anyway, I think it will happen, uh, Montreal would be the top candidate. Um, Montreal has a history of supporting baseball, at least when the team was good. Uh, and I think baseball would do quite well there um, in the right sort of ballpark. Um, and I think it'll happen someday. Ian Gallagher writes, uh, speaking of uh, relocation and media markets, Rob, when the Expos Nationals were first proposed to move to D.C., the Orioles were claiming that the Nats would eat into the Baltimore baseball market. Do you have any sense of whether that has turned out to be true? My sense is no. But I don't base that on any empirical data, just a feeling being in the area. Well, Ian, uh, the Nationals, as you know, became the Nationals in 2005. 
moving from Montreal. And the Orioles at that time were indemnified for, for damages, future damages. Uh, basically, they got a big chunk of the regional sports network that would carry both Orioles and Nationals games. Uh, the Orioles got a, a much larger share uh, of, the, uh, of that, that entity. Uh, I think they got a sweetheart deal myself, and I think the Nationals now are trying to get some of that money back, um, claiming that it's not fair. We'll see what happens with that. Um, as far as attendance goes, the, the Orioles' attendance actually was fine the first year the Nationals moved were in Washington. It uh, basically held steady. Um, and uh, it did drop the second year, 2006, a little bit. Uh, held steady for a few years, then dropped a lot in 2010 and 2011. Um, but I don't know that you can blame the Nationals, who weren't drawing all that well themselves for much of that time. I think you can blame the economy, but for the most part, you can blame the Orioles for not playing well. But the, the market is big enough to support two teams. It's huge, as you know. Um, lots of wealthy people, um, great per capita income in the area. Uh, and uh, I think it'll work out for everyone. If, if both teams are successful on the field, both teams will draw well. And I think good, good, good enough ratings anyway. Last question uh, from Matthew Glidden. Matthew writes, uh, Rob, back when he negotiated with Texas, Scott Boris predicted A-Rod would one day be MLB's all-time home run champ, and it's still possible if he gets a good run of help. Uh, well, I'll argue with that in a second, but um, Matthew goes on to ask, any current young players you'd give a Scott Boris shot at eventually passing A-Rod or Bonds? Well, first of all, about the good run of health, I think A-Rod would need more than that, really. I mean, he would need to become the player um, over the next three or four years that he really hasn't been these last three years, not just health-wise. His power numbers are down, and maybe that's health. I suppose it is, but there's no reason to think that he will get back to where he was hitting 40, 45 home runs per season, which he would need to do at least once or twice to, to, uh, to pass Bonds. Um, but he will get to 700, and perhaps... Uh, beyond. I just don't think he's going to catch Barry Bonds. As far as somebody else having a shot at uh, A-Rod or Bonds, well, let me first say that it's going to be difficult for anybody given the current um, environment. We really don't see many players at all hitting 40, 45, 50 home runs per season. But leaving that aside, uh, looking at the guys who are the younger players who are out there right now, uh, I did look up who's hit the most home runs in the last two seasons, 2011 and 12. Was surprised to find the answer was Curtis Granderson. Um, I mean, clearly he's not a candidate. He's just too old. Uh, he found his power way too late. Um, there are seven other players with more than 45 home runs over these last two seasons. Jose Bautista, Matt Kemp, Mark Teixeira, Ryan Braun, Prince Fielder, Giancarlo Stanton, and Josh Hamilton. Uh, Bautista, Teixeira, Hamilton, they're all too old to challenge Bonds or A-Rod on the home run list, the career home run list. Um, now Stanton is a different case. Stanton debuted when he was 20. He had 34 home runs last year when he was 21. This season he's 22, on pace for 40 home runs. I would say of the current players, um, you know, it's hard to say that Stanton has the best chance to do it, but he's off to the best start among the players who are currently, um, you know, established as great power hitters. It's really too, he's, it's too early to say he's going to hit five, even 400 home runs because he has so many years to go to get there, um, but I think he would be my favorite candidate to someday do something incredible in terms of career home runs. And then if you really want to speculate, um, uh, Bryce Harper's off to a great start at 19. Everyone says his number one tool is his power. An 80 on the scouting scale, 20 to 80. If you figure he's really an 80, tools guy, power, and starting off at 19, you know, no reason he can't hit 25 home runs this year. Um, 20, 25 at 19. Um, if he stays healthy, he projects for an immense number of home runs. But of course, the staying healthy part that's, that's tough over the course of 20 years. I mean, that's where it's really difficult. Not just stay healthy for five seasons, ten seasons. You have to stay healthy for basically 20 years to get to that point. Um, but I would say watch Stanton, watch Harper, 
I don't see anyone else with a reasonable chance of getting to 700 home runs, let alone 750 or, or 800. Uh, that'll do it for this week's edition of Rob's Mailbag. Uh, again, please send your questions for next week's edition. And the email address is Rob's Mailbag, no apostrophe, Rob's Mailbag at SBNation.com. And I will uh, see you next week. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>